Hello my sweet friends and welcome to DIY with Nadia. Today's video is best 20 DIYs of 2020. For this project, you are going to need two identical frames. My frames were identical except for the color and then you're going to remove everything from them including the glass and also the little tabs that hold everything in place. Now that my frames are bare, I'm going to give both of them a few coats of chalked paint and the black one I did give I think three or even four to even out that look. For the netting, I am going to be using this garbage can from the Dollar Tree and the first thing I did was grab my wire cutter and cut off that bottom section of the garbage can and then also I did the same thing removing the top. And the top, do not throw that away. You guys can definitely use this as a wreath eventually. Now find where the bucket comes together. It's going to be a little thicker than the rest of the bucket. And just go down the line and just using your wire cutters, cut along that line. Once you have the netting flat on your desk, start stretching the bottom portion of the bucket out until the top little squares pretty much match the bottom squares. If you feel like you might get hurt by the edges, please use some garden gloves to help you do this part. Now I'm just putting my netting over my frames and with a permanent marker, I'm just marking where I need to cut my netting. Before I hot glued the netting to my frame, I decided to just grab some rubbing alcohol and a little cotton swab and I just removed the permanent marker marks that were left on the netting. Now I'm just using hot glue to attach my netting to the frame and then I'm going to grab the second frame and I'm going to hot glue it back to back so that the front of both frames are facing out. To give the frame a bit of a farmhouse look I am going to grab some zinc gray by Americana and then just dry brush the frames in the front. To hide the seam in between the frames, I'm just going to use this Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm going to hot glue it all around the frame. For embellishment, I'm just grabbing some jute cord, wrapping it around my fingers a few times, then grabbing another little piece of jute cord and just tying it in the middle to make a cute little bow. Then just to give it a little bit of balance with the white, I did put a little pearl in the middle of my little bow. This video is part of a challenge. It's hosted by Heidi Sambul DIY and DIY Beauty on Purpose. I will link their channels down below along with the playlist. Now, let's continue the countdown. All the supplies we're going to be using today are from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start with this foam wreath and then a pack of potpourri and also cotton balls. For both of these projects I did use two packs of cotton balls. Now I'm simply hot gluing the cotton balls to the front, the sides and the inside of my foam wreath. Okay, you guys, now that everything is covered, look how gorgeous this is. If I was selling this or this was going on a door with a glass, I would definitely put a white ribbon to cover the green. But it really, look at this. All the sides, I made sure there was no green. It looks absolutely beautiful. Now for this part, I'm going to be taking all of these that kind of look like these curly cues kind of and I'm going to be breaking them apart because all you really need is this tip to show and I'm just throwing some hot glue right on the edge and it's going in wherever I feel like it needs it if there's any areas that will kind of like peek through like this you can either Put a little bit more cotton in or whatever you like see I decided to stretch this open and I'm just I have a little half a 
puff of uh, cotton and I'm just going to insert it right there. And then I will be going on all of these I'm going to save for later projects. All these other looking ones. But this is, I think this is going to be absolutely stunning. All right. Look how perfect this is to work as a cotton bulb. So pretty. So cute. Okay, you guys, what do you think? So I put a little ribbon right here just to know where I was going to put the original ribbon. And uh, so I'm going to take this off in a second. But before I do that, I decided to use this burlap ribbon and it does have the wire in it. Let me just take it off the spool because I've used it before. And the bow they have here is pretty simple. So I'm just going to do that simple bow that they have there. And I think that's about right. Um, theirs is kind of flat. I actually really don't like the bow they had, but all right, what can I say? Okay. Okay, tail and this and I think what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hot glue these guys together like really really lightly just really really just to bring them together then grab another piece If you're wondering where I got this pink little thumb, um, this is at the Dollar Tree and they come three for a dollar. There's three in the little pack. And I have these uh, on my table at all times. I absolutely love them. Um, here's a little mistake I made, you guys. I shouldn't have put the uh, hot glue right there because it kind of shows through. You can see the little shadow, but that's all right okay let's get the bow a little bit puffed out i i think this side got a little bit longer but that's okay so if you have where you feel like one side is a little longer than the other one what i do is in the back just bring it together and do a little kind of like a wave you don't have to hot glue it in place or anything like that. All right, so like that and the way they have them are like this, coming from the inside out. I made this just a tiny bit too short, but that's all right. That's all right. And then here where I have my little blue ribbon, that's where I'm going to come in with my little, with the rest, I guess, with the rest of the ribbon. And I really don't want it too long, so I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm just going to hot glue the bow in place. And by the way, for this whole wreath, I actually bought a second pack of these because I thought we I needed a lot more. And you know what? Look at this. This is still left over. Look at all of this. It's still left over. So you really do not need much. And this is going to be enough for this project and for the next one. So this is absolutely awesome you just need one pack
For this project, I'm going to start with this mini wooden tray from the Dollar Tree and I will be using my Rust-Oleum chalked paint and linen white to paint the inside edges and the outside edges of this tray. After my two coats of white chalk paint, my tray was pretty dry. Now I'm just grabbing some zinc acrylic paint by Americana and I'm going to dry brush using my gray and white and interchange it and wiping it in between to smooth out the lines of my dry brushing. And here is the final result. I think our little tray turned out absolutely adorable and sweet. Now I'm grabbing a pack of these hair rollers and we are going to need all six of them. Also, we are going to need six cotton balls along with the fabric of your choice. Your fabric needs to be at least half inch wider than the tray and at least three times the length of the tray. Before I started gluing my fabric to the tray, I did cut out little corners on the sides so that I don't have any bulking on the corner edge. The best adhesive to use for this project is tacky glue because while you're doing the project it is malleable you can still move it around but when it dries it will dry solid and strong. I have seen this tacky glue at Michael's before but just in case you can't find it I'll give you a link to the Amazon store where I purchased mine from. I laid my fabric with the bad side facing up. Then I'm just using some tacky glue to attach the fabric to my tray and then here I'm grabbing my first hair roller and also a cotton ball because the roller is just not long enough and I found that the cotton ball works really well and I'm just adding a cotton ball to the edge. Now I'm just putting another layer of tacky glue and I'm rolling my fabric over and making sure it's nice, straight and taut, making that first little loop. When I'm done doing that, I'm just grabbing my little plastic spatula and tucking in that quarter inch that's left over on both sides. This way it's nice and smooth. Now I'm repeating that same process until we get to our sixth roller. Before cutting off the excess fabric, make sure you have enough to cover that last loop. Now just use your spatula and go around tucking in everything that needs to be tucked in and you are all done. What do you guys think? I started off by giving the picture frame two coats of white acrylic paint. You can use any white paint, including chalk paint. That would also work really, really nice. To make this part easy on myself, I decided to divide my picture frame into three sections, the left, the center, and the right. And then I took the left and the right, and of course the center, and divide those sections in half again because of the zigzag way that the picture frame is designed. That was the easiest way to sketch everything out. Here I'm just following what the design is in the picture and I'm actually using this posted node for my right angle to make the little zigzags. I just felt that it was small and it was easy to use so I used that. Then I actually took one of the posted nodes and folded it into about half an inch 
and just kind of use that as a guide for my spacing between the zigzags and that really seemed to work really well throughout the picture frame now i'm using the same white paint i used before but i'm actually putting it on kind of on a thicker side i'm really not taking light little strokes i'm actually trying to put on some volume on this because the other sections of the paint are going to have black and gray and it's going to be layered so i I wanted my white paint to also have that thickness so that's why I decided to do that After my white zigzags have completely dried, I'm grabbing some washi tape and I'm taping over all those zigzags. This way I can use all my dark colors without worrying about damaging all the white zigzags. For my darker paints, I chose Black by Craftsmart and Zinc gray by americana and i went slow you guys there's no need to rush this picture is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle so there was divisions in between the little zigzags so that's why you see me going a little darker in the center and putting that line in with my black paint but the process i used for this whole design is basically a little bit of gray a little bit of black and i streaked it off with my damp paper towel and just continuously repeating that process After my dark zigzags have completely dried, I remove the washi tape and here you can see my beautiful zigzags and I'm so excited. So what I'm doing here is any bleed through that I saw that went underneath the zigzag, I'm just going over with my white paint. And yes, I am ambidextrous. If you noticed, I did switch paint brushes from left to right hand. And I also draw with both hands and write with both hands. So there's a little bit about me. Now it's time to center the picture. I'm just using these black metal, uh, I guess, picture holder little tabs. And I'm just scratching the picture right there. And this just gave me a point where to, um, to cut. And of course, you see my little Leo. He had to make an entrance. <laughs> Since I am using a 99 cent frame, I did want to protect my picture a little bit more. So I used this paper protector or a paper pocket, I guess, and just traced the picture around and made a little bit of kind of a covering for my picture and cut that out. And there's Leo again. this project I'm going to grab my 6x6 six six frame from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give the outside frame two coats of white paint and I'm using the chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and then I'm grabbing the sign itself flipping it upside down and giving it one coat of white paint we don't really need this to be too bright or anything like that I just wanted to dull that background 
To cover the background, I am using this felt from the Dollar Tree. It is quite thin and that's why we needed to paint. And I'm just cutting it to size and hot gluing it to the back of the frame. I wanted to give the background a little sparkle and here are the two adhesives from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use the one that is in that aerosol spray paint because the other one dried up where I can't even use it as a spray. So we'll see how this aerosol one works. Now you can use these sparkles from the Dollar Tree, but I felt like they were too big and I could not find really fine ones in my stash. So I am going to use this glitter that I got at Walmart. Now I'm just simply spraying the adhesive on my felt and then just sprinkling the glitter over it. It gives such a gorgeous effect, you guys. I absolutely loved how this turned out. Now, can you believe that this ornament is actually from the Dollar Tree? Yes, did your Dollar Tree have this ornament? I think it's absolutely gorgeous, seriously. My sisters could not believe that I got this at the Dollar Tree. It is just so beautiful. So here what I'm doing is I'm just putting my little background back into the frame. And then I'm gluing the ornament a little bit lower than the middle of the frame. For the first bow, we are using this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree on Valentine's Day. And what I like to do with ribbon that does not have wire backing is I do like to first stitch it with a needle and thread. I'll just put a little bit of needle and thread in the middle, then bring it together and loop and make little knots until I feel like the bow is secure before I hot glue it to wherever I'm actually hot gluing. Now please ignore that greenery in the background because we are going to replace it with something much, much prettier. For the second bow, I'm using my favorite grow grain white ribbon and I am just using the same technique and just hot gluing that second bow on top of our first one. For the center of my bow, I decided to use this absolutely adorable pine cone that I got on one of the ornaments. And I'm just using some wire cutters to get it off of the ornament and hot gluing it straight to the center of the bow. The greenery I ended up using is this really poofy greenery that you see a lot on a lot of Dollar Tree items like ornaments like that big bell that's on my table. And so to bring it together so it's not as open, I'm just using some floral wire and I'm just giving it a few loops to kind of keep it together. And this worked really, really well. After doing this to both of my pieces, I just hot glue them to the back of the ornament because the ornament is kind of rounded at the bottom. So it had plenty of room for me to put the greenery inside and hot glue it. I just felt like something was still missing from the frame. So to give my frame a gorgeous farmhouse look, I decided to grab some of my zinc by Americana Gray. And I'm just dry brushing really, really lightly along the edges of my frame. To get started on my project, I'm just grabbing my box and removing the top from it. I chose this box because it was nice and sturdy and it was a perfect size. It is 8 inches long, 6 inches wide, and it is 4 inches in height. I felt that the sides of my box were a little bit on the loose side and I wanted them to be nice and perfect. So I just grabbed some packing tape and went over the box a few times with the tape. Now for the burlap. The only burlap I had on hand was this beautiful burlap that I got at Walmart. And this was the only one that was white enough to cover the height of my box. Now, I'll be honest, because this was the only white ribbon that I had on hand, I was worried about that red stripe in the middle, and I wanted to make sure that my project did not look like a Christmas display, but it looked like something that I can use throughout the year. What do you guys think? How did I do on the final project? 
and how it looks would you put it out in the middle of the summer or would you think it's something that is more holiday looking let me know down below I chose this 5 inch burlap ribbon because the height of my box was 4 inches. I started by hot gluing the ribbon to the back of my box, went around and cut to size. Because I only used hot glue in the back where both of my ribbons were connecting, I just went around and made sure that my red stripe is in the center throughout the box. Now I'm just hot gluing and folding into the box and then I will do the same thing at the bottom of the box. I was a little bit more careful hot gluing the bottom because you want to make sure that it's nice and straight. So first I hot glued the sides and then I folded in the front and the back and reinforced all four corners with a little bit more of hot glue. Came down that red stripe in the middle I decided to use a scrap piece of burlap that I had and this burlap piece was a little bit over an inch in width and I just hot glued it all around the box but to make sure the hot glue did not show up on the edges of the box I only hot glued it and attached it to the corners of the box I wanted to see if this technique would work and how visible it would be and I have to admit it looks really nice so when you look at the box from the front or the left or the right it's not visible at all now I'm grabbing this twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just wrapping it around the middle of my box three times and hot gluing it to the front center. With the remaining twine, I decided to make a bow. I first cut off a little piece to act as a tail to tie the ribbon together. The remaining twine I just wrapped around my fingers and then tied in the middle with the second piece to make the bow. And now I'm just hot gluing the bow to the front center of the box. To fill this box, I will be using this white floral foam from the Dollar Tree and it took me two and a little bit more to fill it up all the way. Now it's time to do the top of the box. I'm just grabbing some reindeer moss that I got at the Dollar Tree. The tall succulents are actually from a set from Ikea and the flat ones are left over from a previous project that I did. For the finishing touch, I decided to get one of these chalkboard wooden stakes and using these stickers from Michaels, I decided to write out the word GROW. For our second project, I decided to use a thin, long box that I actually got jewelry in. And as you can see, uh, there were little handles on it, but I cut those off. And now I'm just grabbing some liner paper that you've seen at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to wrap this whole box in this paper. I decided to do this part in sections. So the first section is going to be front to back. 
The second piece is going to be left side to right side of the box. The third piece is going to be the inside of the box or the inside uh, half of the box. And the fourth piece is going to be for the divider that I'm going to put in the box. I found that the hardest part of this process was actually peeling away that paper because I had no nails and it was so hard to do that. So I started off by doing the inside and I just peeled off the paper on one side and just kept on peeling it off as I was putting it around the inside perimeter of the box. I was worried that my piece that was going from side to side was not going to be enough to cover and go inside the box so I just cut off two little strips and taped over the top sides of the box. To make sure I was putting my box in the middle, I first lined up the paper with my box. With a pencil, I marked both sides. Then I ripped away the paper and folded it at those lines that I marked. Then I simply put the box straight onto the sticky part and then ripped away both sides and just stuck them to the sides of the box. I then repeated the same process taping from front to back. Now that we've taped front to back, I'm just cutting off the access. If you're wondering why I did do the extra half inch access, that's just because in case you tape it on crooked, you still have room to juggle and make sure that you have a nice pretty picture because there's kind of no going back. If you make it crooked, it's either you're going to ruin the whole piece or you're going to have to start over. I wanted to make a divider for my remote control holder, so I just grabbed another piece of cardboard, cut it to size, then covered with another piece of shelf liner, and then just placed it in the middle of the box. And now it's time to jazz up our remote control holder. I'm going to start with this one and a half inch black ribbon, and I'm going to go just on one side from front to back and hot glue it inside. Then I'm moving on to my white ribbon, which is slightly smaller. My white ribbon is one inch and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to go in the middle of my black ribbon and just go around. To bring the black out, I decided to get some of these gems and I got these gems on Amazon. The box was not included and I just took five of them and spread them on the white ribbon. Then I grabbed my measuring mat and made sure that my gems were semi evenly spread out and then just simply hot glued them to the ribbon. I found this cute little shadow box at the Dollar Tree and because there was a few layers of paint on there I decided to sand it down just a little bit before I gave it two coats of chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. Now I'm grabbing this coral acrylic paint and mixing it a little bit with this white sand from the Dollar Tree to give it that, well, to give it a sand effect and for it to match the sand on the picture that I'm using. Now using my little spatula, I'm just putting it at the bottom of my little shadow box. And I'm not making it perfect by any means. I want it to look like sand. I want it to have little hills kind of. You know, I, I don't want this to be perfect. And that is so much fun, you guys. I absolutely love how this turned out. And now I'm just going to put it aside and let it dry for about two hours. 
Grabbing my Mod Podge, I'm just putting it on the back of my little shadow box and I already pre-cut my picture from a photo shoot we did with my husband in Mexico and I thought it was perfect to have the sand in the picture match the sand that I have on the front and then of course I sealed it with another layer of Mod Podge, both the picture and the sand. To add some dimension to my little picture, I decided to add a little bit of tiny, tiny little shells and things I found on the beach, little coral looking things, and I just kind of added them to make it look like the continuation of the beach and things are just laying around on the beach. And of course, you see my little fan right there, <laughs> his little face looking at what I'm doing. Now I'm just grabbing some Baker's Twine. It's light blue and I thought it matched very, very nicely. And I just twisted it around the top a few times and hot glued it in the back so it's nice and tight. And then just added a pearl to the center where I crisscrossed everything. And I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. What do you guys think about this one? This is my husband's favorite out of all of these DIYs. To get started, we are going to need E6000. Then we have our little cup and saucer that I got for 99 cents. It was $1.99. And then it was 50% off of that. And then a fork, but make sure it's a bendable fork or some kind of a wire that's pliable but strong. Fork seems to be the best um, for this project. Now I'm going to start by bending my fork. Okay, I'm going to figure out how to bend this part, but you want to bend about at least like three quarters of an inch. Okay, for this we are going to use a combination of E6000 and I want my fork to be right here so the little handle is going to be off to the side. And so I'm going to start with a generous, I need a new thing of E6000, a generous dollop of E6000. Get it down there. Another generous dollop. Once that's on there nicely, and I know I have plenty, I'm going to, right there on the edges, I'm going to put some hot glue just so it's, it's going to hold the E6000 in place. And if you want to, you could put more E6000 on it later, but for now, I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and sealed there. With that, and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something underneath, maybe, maybe like this candle. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to let it sit like this. I'm probably going to give it a day. Then I'm going to do the plate. We're going to attach this part to the plate. Okay, you guys, this is nice and dry. It's been a good 12 hours since I did this part. Now, I found something in my house. It's actually one of these aroma things. Um, I wanted something... To make sure that this will kind of lean against and be okay and I'm just going to start by really squirting my E6000 on the plate now we want to make sure that our little project here is not going to tilt over so I'm putting some rocks on here and we're going to actually paint these and cover these. So don't worry about the aesthetic of it, what it looks like, because as I said, we are going to cover this area up. Before we continue, I got a few of these floral wires. It was from a floral. So 
one of them I'm going to bend this way so I can shove it underneath um, one of the stones somehow and then I wanted to kind of have a feeling I want it See, at this part, you could do whatever you want because it's still movable. Let me see here. That's too high. I'm going to cut it right here. And I'm going to bend this. So uh, what I'm making is the splash right now. Make sure it's propped up nicely so the bottom does not slide while the E6000 is drying. For this part I'm going to be using this brown by Craftsmart and then I a little bit of black because I this is a little too light for what I need. Okay, so I will be painting the rocks, my little, um, let me show you. So I'm painting on the inside here everywhere where I'm going to have co coffee grounds. I want that painted just so your background is um, covered, especially right here in the back. You want to get that area. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back with a clean brush. I'm going to get rid of this one with a clean brush and just uh, clean up where I kind of have paint seeping over. I'm just going to clean that up real quick. Okay, you guys, grabbing my uh, hot glue sticks. I got my delicious coffee right here that my husband got and he this is organic coffee actually believe it or not but anyway and now what I'm going to do is everywhere where you see brown that's gonna be coffee and these things that are sticking out these little splashes that I made those are going to be last So I hot glued all of this and then if you look inside what I basically did was just throw some hot glue gun in the back and just throw the coffee beans in and press them. You do want it to look like it's cascading down from thicker to thin so I'm trying to see if I'm not going to need any on the side here and I think this looks pretty good. It's going you know kind of from larger to smaller. To decorate my little cup I took three four inch pieces of this burlap ribbon and then I also grabbed the grow grain ribbon and did the same thing.
After making little ducktails on my grow grain ribbon, I'm just taking and then layering the burlap on my grow grain, doing that three times and uh, fanning that out. And I'm just bringing it together with a little bit of jute cord, then tying the jute cord right onto the cup handle. To tie everything in, I grabbed three more coffee beans and hot glued them to the center of my little ribbon bow. This is one of my favorite floral DIYs from the Dollar Tree. You can dress it up to your style and liking because depending on how you decorate this. So the first thing you're going to need is these two floral foam discs. They come two for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and you're going to take them apart, put some hot glue on there and then put them back together. This is going to give you an inch and a half of height for that floral foam. The florals that I chose were these beautiful white peonies that have a hint of pink all throughout the petals. And the ribbon that I chose is this beautiful pink burlap ribbon. This height was so perfect because we have one and a half inches of our floral foam and then the burlap ribbon is two inches in height. So when we are going to hot glue the ribbon right around the floral foam, it's perfect because it gives it a little height and when we put the flowers on the top, it's going to hide that white floral foam and it's going to look absolutely stunning, you guys. Now, I had a few people ask me about my pink uh, finger uh, thimble that I have on. And it's the silicone thimble that, that I got at the Dollar Tree. And they come three for a dollar. And they are to be used with a hot glue gun. Because I'm using burlap here, you can imagine that some of the hot glue is going to seep through. And that is why I'm using that finger. And I'm just like, you know, patching it in to make sure it's nice and smooth. And this finger is absolutely amazing. It changed my DIY ways. I absolutely love it. I'll insert the video here of the Dollar Tree haul when I got this finger. And I wasn't sure about it to tell you the truth. I heard good things, but you know what? It's one of the best things to buy a Dollar Tree for crafters who use hot glue as often as I do. I will be using only one bushel of these peonies because they are quite large and they are going to fill up that space in the middle of the floral foam really nicely. To make sure my flowers are nice and even, I put one flower in the middle and then just worked around with the rest of the flowers. To add the finishing touches to this project, I decided to incorporate a little bit of that jute cord. I took the jute cord and wrapped it around my little florals there, right in the middle of my pink burlap ribbon. And then where I'm cutting it off is where I'm going to hot glue my jute cord bow. The way I make my jute cord bow is pretty simple. I leave an inch off. Then I wrap it around my fingers a few times, then I leave another inch of a tail, and then I cut it off. Then with another little piece of jute cord, I just tie it all together in the middle, and I have my bow. Can you guys guess what this is? Well, it's actually a wall hanging from Michael's and usually it has some sort of greenery on it. And this particular one had succulents on it and I made a wreath out of it. I'm gonna insert the video right here. 
So what I decided to do is to do my own wall hanging. I had three of these deco mesh rolls left over from the 4th of July. So what I decided to do is grab my deco mesh and I'm going to be making loops, pulling them through the squares in this background. Now there are points on this background on one side. So where there are points, that's going to be my front. And as you see, my back is smooth. So first thing you see me doing here is I'm pulling the tail through and I'm going to zip tie it to my little background. The important thing to remember here is I will be starting and ending always in the back so that the loops are going to be going towards the front of the background. Every few loops, I use the zip tie to secure the loops in place just to make sure that nothing falls out of place and if it does you don't have to go too far here I'm just grabbing my loops and I'm opening them up to see how full my project is going to be and if I needed to do it in every single little square and I came to the conclusion that yes, it needed to be every single square. So I just continued back and forth on my background until I was all done with all the deco mesh that I had on hand. When I was done with all my deco mesh, I had left, I had two and a half rows left over. So I just grabbed my wire cutters and I just snipped the leftover background off. When I choose the decoration for my pieces, I consider the overall picture. My deco mesh is quite busy with the red, white, and blue. So I knew I needed something simple, but also something to bring everything together. So I started with my favorite ribbon, which is the gross grain ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just doing a simple bow and bringing it together. And what I decided for this project is I'm going to do three bows and then just layer them one on top of the other. To bring everything together, I'm using this checkered red and white ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree on Valentine's. Now I have the red and the white and it's not that busy, but it is going to complete the project really simply and beautifully. And for my third bow, once again, I am using the white grass grain ribbon. And this one is 5 eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to hot glue it right on top of the red checkered one. I decided to attach the bow straight onto one of my loops uh, where my bow looked really nice and with the help of my handy dandy finger protectors I just hot glued the bow onto my mesh. Using lots and lots of hot glue on the back of my carnation I'm just 
hot gluing it to the center of my bow now I'm just cutting the edges of my bow tails and I'm all done For this project I will be using this Harvest Blessing sign from the Dollar Tree and the first thing I do is usually just take off the hanging jute cord and just patch those little holes in with some spackle. The one I'm using is my husband's because I could not find my Dollar Tree lightweight one. Either would work just fine. I will be using the back side of the sign and the first thing I did here is give it two coats of chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and the color is linen white. For that faux wood look I'm just grabbing another sign from the Dollar Tree and using it as a guide to separate my sign into sections. Now I'm just filling in all the lines with a gray acrylic paint by Americana. To make it easier on myself I grabbed a piece of paper and just folded it in three that way it's just easier to go down the line and make sure my lines are nice and straight. To lighten up those gray lines, I'm using some white acrylic paint and I'm almost dry brushing it on and then I'm just using paper towel to kind of wipe off the excess and then more gray, more, more white, whatever I felt like until my lines made it look like all my wooden pieces kind of had shadow versus having those bold gray lines. The thankful sign that I'm using came in a set of three metal words from the Dollar Tree and all I'm doing is grabbing some acrylic black paint and I'm dabbing on kind of like when you're stenciling. I'm just dabbing the black paint on and it took two layers to cover everything because it is a piece of metal. To completely seal that black paint, I am using some Mod Podge and I felt like this really, really worked and I was really happy with the end results. So the florals I am using are actually these little bundles from the Dollar Tree. Can you guys believe it? I remember being on a serious hunt last year to find these. And if anyone sees them this year, please let me know because I will definitely be getting more. And so I just grabbed them, folded those ends a little bit in so they're not sticking out because I really wanted to interlock kind of the florals that way see how they're both kind of just facing each other making this huge floral and those sides the sides look like they're just kind of flowing down and I feel like that floral on top just made the whole sign absolutely stunning to give my sign a little bit of a character I decided to grab this antique gold paint marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm making little stitches throughout the edge of the sign. To attach the thankful sign to the board I'm using some crazy glue instead of the hot glue gun because I thought the hot glue gun is just too thick and it would definitely show through this thin delicate sign. For this project I will be using the sign from the Dollar Tree. First I removed the burlap cord, then I removed the little sign with a little scalpel, and then I gave it two coats of white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and linen white. To write the word farmhouse I will be using this stencil that I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance. Because the stencil was pretty flimsy I knew that it was going to get really messy if I just used a stencil brush. So I decided to trace the letters and then just freehand paint it with some black acrylic paint. To paint the word farmhouse I'm using these delicate brushes and these are actually nail art brushes and I got these on Amazon for next to nothing. I will attach the link to the paint brushes in the description box. Thank you. 
For this next part, I'm using an organizer basket and the white felt that are both from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut off a piece that's the length of my basket plus two more inches on each side. Working front to back, I'm hot gluing the white felt onto itself and the basket. And just on the sides, I am cutting off a little piece on the edges so it's not so bulky and just folding it in and hot gluing it. To decorate the basket, I will be using this burlap ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. And starting in the back, I'm wrapping it around and hot gluing it only in the back. Grabbing some floral foam, I just cut it down to size and hot glued it to the inside of the basket. Now it's time to decorate. I have a lot of these spring florals that I still have left. And I'm just cutting them to size and putting them in the floral foam. cover the floral foam and to give it a little bit of a wild look a little bit I'm adding this Spanish moss and it absolutely gave it such a gorgeous little look I absolutely love how this sign and especially the floral part turned out to attach the basket to my sign I used a lot of hot glue I wanted to make sure that my hot glue went through the burlap and also the felt so everything comes together really nicely and gives it a good solid hold for the first bow I will be using this houndstooth pattern wired edge ribbon and I just measured to make sure that it was double the width of my sign. Then I just brought the edges together, overlapped it about an inch, found my center, did a dab of hot glue there and then I did the same thing with the second bow except I made it a little smaller. Obviously you guys can choose how long or small or big you want your bow to be I just eyed it then I'm just grabbing another piece of that white ribbon that white ribbon is actually grow green ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I just cut off another little piece to go in the middle and bring both bows together then I'm just hot gluing it to the top center of my sign So for this project, I will be using this kind of like a gift tag, which was from the nautical section of, um, of the spring collection. And then I'm going to be using these leaves, these wooden leaves from the Dollar Tree. And I went ahead and put in some Dollar Tree spackling in the little holes because they come with little holes like right here. And they come in a set of five. So four of them I'm going to do, but I really want them to be nice and flat so I decided that on the side that I'm going to be um, painting I decided to do one more before I sand it down just to make sure it's nice and smooth. So as usual we'll take the tag off first. So I decided to go ahead and spackle the little holes in the sign also I'm one of those people I don't really like the jute cord the way Dollar Tree has them um, if I need to hang this piece I would just hot glue a piece of jute cord in the back right here you could actually use the same one really but this is how I prefer it so I'm going to let this dry and the next thing I'm going to do is grab this craft smart um, chalky paint and give this two coats of a nice beautiful black paint okay now I'm just taking the leaves and I'm going to sand them down now I'm just grabbing some white chalk paint and I'm going to be painting the leaves I'm guessing it's going to take maybe two coats at the most because this is really light there's no design on it.
So for the leaves, well, I wanted to do something different for the stem and I'm going to be using these stickers which are super super close to the Dollar Tree ribbon that you can use. But I'll try to find this and put it in the description box. I got this on eBay a long time ago and I'm just cutting off a little piece and as I said you could definitely do this with ribbon just cut it off and you could hot glue it but it's just easier when it's a sticker and I'm just going to cover it from here and cover it from here and so we have a little checkered step I thought it was gonna be so cute I'm taking these letters from the Dollar Tree grabbing some florals from the Dollar Tree these are the spring little florals I'm going to grab the ones with the purple flowers have these pretty little stems here and I'm just going to cut off that, that hard edge. For the bow I will be using this beautiful buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and this is 5 eighths of an inch. So is this one and this is a grow grain ribbon from the Dollar Tree. So what I always like to do is measure out how much I'm going to need and I want the tail to be a little bit on the bigger side. Measure my bow, about there. you can always cut it shorter later and then I'm going to cut two of the buffalo check ones. So here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a buffalo check. Then I'm going to have the white grow grain, then buffalo check on top. Bring it together, find the middle, and when you find the middle, that's when we're going to do a loop number one, a loop number two, and we're going to bring it together. I'm just grabbing a piece of uh, chenille wire here. I like using wire for um, these types of bows because when I'm making a bow that I need to manipulate, meaning I want to move around and I need to move my little, you know, the way I want the tails to hang, it's just easier to do it when you use a piece of wire to bring it together. Before I do the center, I like to actually open the bow up. For this sign I will be using three of these snow globes from the Dollar Tree and the first thing I did was removed all the twine on it and the little tags and then I gave the snow globe two coats of white paint on top and then black paint on the bottom. To write the word joy I'm using stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm using a ruler to make sure every one of my letters are centered and pretty much in the same spot. Now I'm going to be using this decorative mesh that I'm absolutely head over heels for because these are actually really expensive if you go to Michaels or Join Fabrics so I was so glad to find this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off pieces that are just a little bit bigger than my little snow globes and I'm going to be mod podging them onto the globe part of my signs. I'm putting a heavy layer of Mod Podge on my sign then putting up my decorative mesh on top and then giving it another thick layer of Mod Podge. 
After I let my snow globes dry for about an hour, I'm just cutting off all the excess from the sides of the globe. Then I'm putting on this gorgeous little ribbon from the Dollar Tree right below the little globe part. And then just adding a red little bow also from the Dollar Tree in the middle of my little ribbon. get started on the sled I'm going to take the tags off and then I'm just going to grab a piece of sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and sand down where it says let it snow because it was all in sparkles and I'm going to be painting over that in my chalk rustoleum paint and I gave it two good coats because the picture I will be using has black undertones in it I'm going to grab some black chalk paint and I'm actually going to paint the little sticks that are behind the sled all in black now I'm going to grab my beautiful gift bag and I'm going to cut out the design itself now I'm tracing the design around the sled cutting it out and mod podging it to the sled now it's time to decorate our sled I'm using some greenery from a pick that I had left over and it's just a holly leaf and a Christmas tree branch I'm cutting off any excess and hot gluing it to the side of the sled top I knew that I wanted a bow with a long tail to bring the whole picture together so measuring out the length that I need of my grow grain ribbon then I'm going to take some of this red and white checkered ribbon and cut it to the same size as I measured my first bow to make the bows I'm first going to take the white one find the center make a simple bow and then I'm going to use needle and thread to bring the bow together and then I'm going to do the same thing with the second bow, bring it together nice and even and then use that same thread and put the needle through that second bow. I'm going to loop that same thread around the center of the bow. That way we have a nice tight center and the bow loops will pop out really nicely. Next, I'm cutting the tail ends on an angle and singeing the ends to prevent fraying. Please use caution during this process. To complete the look, I'm going to take two of these mini poinsettia flowers. To make them fuller, I'm just going to hot glue them one on top of the other and then to the center of my bow. To get started on this wreath, I'm grabbing 88 20 millimeter wooden beads. I'm going to be using white chalk paint by Rustoleum to paint them all white, and I'm simply putting them on skewers and then just painting away. Now I'm grabbing 22 14 millimeter wooden beads and I'm going to be painting them in a black chalk paint. You can definitely use acrylic paint for both the white and the black beads. Now my beads are nice and dry and I gave them all just one coat of paint. This is the hardest part and it's cutting the wire on top of that pumpkin and we're just cutting the six inner loops and we're just cutting them as close as we can get to that top form of the pumpkin. Now I'm just feeding the beads on and I'm doing three white, one black, three white, one black. The four rows in the middle are going to use four black balls and the two on the sides they are going to be using three each because they are a little shorter. Before hot gluing the beads in place I'm using some office paper clips to hold each row in place. To secure my beads onto the rows I'm grabbing the second to the last bead in the row putting a dollop of hot glue right in the middle and then topping it off with the last bead. What this does is it unites the two top beads onto the wire and they are not going to move anywhere. Now I'm attaching the rows back onto the pumpkin right where they were before. The stump of the pumpkin came off as I was removing the rose from the pumpkin and here I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and I'm hot gluing it back in place. 
To cover the edges of the pumpkin, I'm just grabbing some grow green ribbon from the Dollar Tree and on a little bit of a slant, I'm just wrapping the ribbon all around the pumpkin. I'm using the spring lilac florals to add some color into this piece. I made two bundles and had one facing the left and the other bundle facing the right. And I attached both of the bundles with some wire from the Dollar Tree. To make the bow, I will be using this buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to make a six loop bow which means I prepared my tail and then I'm just going to zigzag back and forth to my desired measurement, which in my case was about eight inches. And I went back and forth until I saw that I had three loops on each side to make my six loop bow. Using that same wire, I attached the bow to the stem of my pumpkin, and now I'm just making little ducktails to the length that I wanted. When I was done with the bow, I felt like I needed a loop in the middle, which I forgot. So if you ever run into this situation, grab another piece of ribbon, make a little loop, overlap it in the middle, and then where you overlapped, just use a little piece of wire, bring it together, and then just attach it to the center of the bow. The first thing I wanted to do with my jar is to shade it some color and I had this turquoise Mod Podge on stash. If you also want to achieve this all you have to do is just add a little bit of food coloring to your Mod Podge and you pretty much will get the same effect. After my jar dried for about 3 hours, I thought it was still a little too light for the effect that I wanted. So I decided to give it a second coat of that turquoise Mod Podge. Now it's time to get started on our pin cushion. To make the cushion that is going to go underneath our fabric, it needs to be at least double the size of a lid that you are using. And I just happened to have a plate on hand that was pretty close, so I traced that and cut that out. To make the cushion, I'm just doing an endless seam all the way around without folding the edges. Just very, very simple and I'm sorry that I did go off screen a little bit. Now I'm just grabbing some pillow stuffing and lightly stuffing our little cushion. And as you can see, I did not close that little gap all the way because it's going to be covered by fabric on top of that anyway. Now that I cut out my square for my pin cushion, it's time to bring it all together. On top of my lid, I'm putting my little cushion. Then I'm picking the pretty design that I wanted on the front of my cushion. And then what I'm going to do to tighten all of this up is put the lid over a jar and then hot glue the edges to the back of the lid. To attach my pin cushion to the lid, I'm just using a hot glue gun and going around on the inside of the lid and just pushing my pin cushion through. Then I'm cutting off the excess fabric and just hot gluing anything that was loose. This next step is not necessary, but for some of us that are just a tiny bit OCD, I wanted a cleaner look in the back of my lid, so I cut out a circle out of felt and just hot glued it to the back of the lid. To complete this look, I'm grabbing both my jute cord and this cotton twine and I'm just going to go around the neck of the jar a few times and hot gluing it in place. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we're done with this project, I'm just gonna fill up this jar with some thread, a pair of scissors, put some pins on top, and of course, a needle. First thing we're going to do is stack the funnels from smallest to largest then I wanted to cut those little sides off and I tried using my wire cutters but it was so easy to cut off I just used regular scissors. When hot gluing the funnels together, make sure you only put the hot glue on the outside of the funnel neck because we are going to feed light through all the funnels. To make sure our funnels looked more like a Christmas tree, I used foil. And because the neck is so long, I started with the top. Then I grabbed another piece of foil, folded it in half, and covered the white section at the bottom of the tree. I then hot glued everything that was kind of sticking out just to make sure that the foil would not fall off and everything was nice and secure. To cover the tree, I got this garland from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use the whole piece. Starting at the top, I just hot glued my garland and made sure that my tree was nice and full. Then I decided to fluff the tree out and give it just a little bit of a haircut, especially where the greenery was sticking out way too much. By the way, you guys, when you're doing this and you decide to give your tree a haircut, make sure you do it in something that you can, like in a plastic bag or something that you could throw away because this green stuff was all over my office. It was almost like glitter. It would not come off of anything. Next, we're going to light up this Christmas tree. We're grabbing our mesh tubing and the little lights that I got the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna put batteries in those lights. Then what I'm going to do is feed the lights through the bottom of the tree and secure the battery pack with either hot glue gun or tape. I had some good tape on hand, so I just taped it to the Christmas tree. Making sure that the last light was fed through the Christmas tree, I gave it a little bit of a pinch at the top so that I know that that was my ending. Next, I measured out how much mesh tubing I needed, and it is very easy to stretch this mesh tubing, so make sure you're very careful and give yourself enough tubing. Now I'm simply feeding the lights through the mesh tubing. Here, my silly self thought I can sew the ending together, but when that didn't work out, I just simply grabbed my thread and just looped it around and tied it around the ending. Now I'm going to do the same thing and tie the mesh tubing to my lights at the top. When I turned on the lights and started to put them around my Christmas tree, what I noticed was that last light kept on wanting to slide back because as you're putting the mesh around the tree, you're kind of stretching it a little bit as you need it. So I took another piece of thread and tied right there and I just hid it in between the greenery so you don't see that pinching. Mm -hmm. 
then I hot glued the ending of my mesh to the inside of the Christmas tree. For my decoration, I knew I wanted a pop of red color. So I had these pom-poms uh, that I had left over, which are available at the Dollar Tree, and also these little berries that are also available at the Dollar Tree. And I decided to go with the berries. They had a little glitter on them, and I thought they would be just perfect. On each stem, the berries have about three of the little bushels, and I just cut those off and then just started hot gluing them to my tree. For the top of the tree, I'm grabbing this ornament from the dollar store. I'm going to pick the best corner and make sure that faces up and then just hot gluing it in place. So today we are doing a living wall or moss art and these pieces have been showing up everywhere. I've been seeing them in expensive restaurants, coffee shops, just everywhere and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. We are making beautiful pieces from nature itself. I'm so excited that the living wall that I made today is all from the Dollar Tree and a few items I found in my backyard. Okay, so for this project, the only thing that's not going to be Dollar Tree is natural things like a piece of wood that you can find in your backyard or this bark from a tree that I got literally in my front yard, actually along with this stick. And then other things I will be using is here's some greenery. This is all Dollar Tree. Then some stone, some rocks. The picture frame that I'm using is this one and it's obviously from the Dollar Tree and because it's black I want to give it a more natural look so I will be painting it um, a lighter color, maybe some gray, some white, incorporate some natural tones into the frame. Next I got some more Dollar Tree items I will be using. Uh, first are these little stems, then some fox moss stones then the actual floral moss or reindeer moss and those are two different ones if you take a look so the floral moss is more green and it's kind of fluffier and then reindeer moss it has like more of these stems to them so i have those and then i'm going to incorporate the spanish moss also but you know this is not a big picture frame so we'll see how much of this stuff we will use but bottom line is we are going to have fun let's get started i'm actually going to keep this little uh string over here but i am going to remove this one right here Okay, we're starting with the frame and I got a few colors. So this gray is actually left over from a previous project and it's just basically white and black together. Then there's white acrylic paint. Then I have some um, Craft Smart Brown. And then I have Deep Burgundy by Americana. And I just want, because it's just black, you guys. It's simply black and I really just want to bring it back to nature we, we you know we're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, greens and you know natural tones so i'm starting with the gray just to clean it up a little bit and uh get away from that black and i'm not really going full force uh, meaning you know it needs to be oh i need my gloves you guys i just i'm one of i have a specialty of just getting paint all over me no matter how hard i try and don't even 
think that just because I have gloves doesn't mean that I'm not going to get any on me. I'm just that good. I love the final look. It looks natural. It has all these tones in here. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to put Mod Podge over it just so it seals. Because I'm afraid it's going to crackle or crack, whatever you want to call it, if I do not. So I do want to make sure that it's nice and sealed. And then we are going to move on with the picture. Okay, so next I have this piece of wood and I really like this part because it stands up a little bit. So I want to measure how much, and I think I have to get rid of this little stump right here. Let me see here. So it goes in and I think I'm going to cut it right here so it can go underneath. Let's see here, right there. It's going to get cut and then I want this to go a little bit further, so maybe right there. And I am just going to be using my little whatever this is. Okay, I like that. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I can definitely do this this right here okay I'm loving it and I am going to cover this with some chalk paint because when you have greenery and then see we have a little bit white right here you can definitely keep it like this because it's beautiful with the two-tone but I do want it to look like birch a little bit and so it'll look really really nice against the green I am going to um, basically dry brush it with the chalk paint Okay, my twigs are all painted white and I decided because birch does have like black marks, I'm going to use this nail file. It's, it's a little metal nail file. You can also just get some black paint, but I thought this would look uh, a little bit more realistic and I'm just making little marks. I think I do want to add a little bit of black paint, just a tiny bit here and there. It'll give it a little bit more dimension. So that is what I'll be doing next. Grabbing some a deep green and I decided just to give it a coat of green I think I squeezed even too much um, just so it's not bare black and I'm not even this doesn't need to be anything specific I'm just giving it a nice coat of green and I feel like I need to lighten it up just a little bit this seems a little dark painting this I realized how thin it was and I was just afraid that as soon as I start using my hot glue gun it's going to start messing with the actual cardboard so I decided to give it a little bit more strength and this is the Dollar Tree foam board I just cut it to size and I'm just going to use some tacky glue by the way they do have this at the Dollar Tree it's you know a smaller size obviously but they still have it and I'm just going to put tacky glue on here and attach both of the boards. To start my artwork, I did start each area by putting down the floral moss or the reindeer moss behind the scene and then bringing up the wooden pieces or the sticks on top of it. That way you already have something behind and it will look more natural as you go on with the project and you add on layers of reindeer moss and floral moss and maybe adding little touches of maybe flowers or whatever else you're adding to the artwork.
here we are so far there's some little areas that I still need to fill in with the moss but here's what I decided um, keeping with the Dollar Tree theme I'm going to use this these gypso little florals and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little flowers out of them so but I don't want white because uh, maybe I'll still use white but anyway I'm going to make the pink and yellow and so this one is just yellow by Craftsmart and this one is light pink by Craftsmart and I'm just going to separate these and paint Okay, you guys I have my little flowers all dry now and I'm just going to cut them really short I think I'm going to start with the white ones I want a little bit of white right here And I think I'm done with this. I just am going to fill in wherever there is um, any any background showing. And I think we are done, you guys. I think this scene is complete. And all from the Dollar Tree. I think that part is quite awesome. And that is it for the best 20 DIYs in 2020. Let me know down below which one is your absolute favorite. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.